Hi, Shannon here from houseimprovements.com and today I want to show you through this video uh, how, to, how I would install a toilet. Um, we, uh, you might start to recognize this room, we've been doing a few videos in here, so uh, it's starting to finally come together. And today it's time to put the toilet on. We've uh, purposely decided to put the toilet on before the vanity was sitting here, uh, just so it might be a little better camera angle for, for you to see what I'm doing. So we've picked up our toilet. A lot of manufacturers now are uh, kind of doing an all-in-one inclusive everything in a box sort of deal uh, with their toilets. Um, so that's, that's what we've got to work with today. I have never used this particular toilet, so I guess we'll find out once we get the box open exactly what all's in there. Um, one thing to consider when purchasing a toilet is uh, I always try to recommend, and, and if you watch any of my videos, I, I'm generally not a person to buy the cheapest thing I can find. Um, usually if you spend very little money you're you're getting very little value in return so again with toilets uh, you know it's not necessarily uh, necessary to, to spend five six hundred dollars on a toilet but I wouldn't necessarily spend eighty or ninety dollars on a toilet either um, so we're kind of middle of the row here uh, looks like we're about a couple hundred dollars for this this particular one so we'll get it out and have a look and uh, see what we think of it as we go um, as far as preparation, I'm just going to slide this out of the way a little bit. We've got our uh, water supply line back here. So that was an existing valve and everything that seems to be alright, so we're reusing it. And uh, we've installed a new toilet flange after we did the flooring. Uh, so the flange is installed and it's been mounted down to, screwed down to the floor. I've just got the rag in there for sewer gas for the time being. Um, I think we're at the point now where we could open this box up and see what we have in here. Now, it says on the box that uh, I don't need any tools, so I guess we'll see. Uh, generally, you're going to need a crescent wrench, um, maybe a large flat-headed screwdriver, a hacksaw, and uh, those would be the main things, I guess, really, that you would usually need. So we'll see what what these guys have in here that doesn't require tools. So uh, we've got a ton of cardboard. So first thing I find right on the top here is the actual fill the t the tank itself. So I'm just going to set that out of the way. have tons of cardboard to recycle once we get this all out of here. Uh, the next thing uh, looks like they've got the main base of the toilet so I'm going to pull that out and again I'll just set it here to the side and uh, this looks like the grab bag of all the necessary parts and pieces that we need. So it looks like everything else is just packing material just kind of get it back in there and out of our way here. Set that out of the way. Okay, so there's the main base of our of our toilet. It's just dirt there. Um, well, before I've got the t uh, tank on, I'll just flip it over here so you can see the bottom. Basically what happens is, uh, well, let's open this too. I'm just going to kind of go through some of the bits and pieces here so that you kind of know what uh, what everything is. I'm just having a look. Oh, this one even comes with uh, some instructions here, little pamphlets and stuff. So we'll get that out of the way. That's mostly all the seat in there. This bag of goodies should have a few different items in it. We will have, I have no idea what those are. I might have to read the instructions myself. That might be their little tool kit possibly. So they've uh, sent along the uh, bolts, the flange bolts. And uh, it looks like these ones are only brass plated. I prefer the, the completely brass bolts, solid brass, because they cut easier, a lot easier to, to deal with, but uh, we'll see what happens with these ones. So these bolts flip, fit into the toilet flange. Generally you'll see an oblong head on them, 
and that'll fit down in a slot and kind of lock into place. I'll just take this out and there's, uh, there's one on each side so your, your bolts would sit in there like that. Okay, so if, if your toilet doesn't come with all this stuff, you're going to need a set of bolts and preferably solid brass if you can get that. Uh, we need a wax ring and the wax ring is basically what seals uh, between the toilet and the flange on the floor. And uh, they send a good, good wax ring here and I'll show you why if I can get it unwrapped without getting this all over me. Um, some wax rings are just, just the wax itself and uh, somewhat thinner than this. Uh, I prefer, and you can, you can buy them this way, they've got this rubber flange embedded in the wax and the wax is actually a little extra thick as well. So this just gives you a little extra protection. Um, let's say that you have an existing ring, uh, existing flange and maybe it's not sitting up on the floor like this. It could be flush because you've tiled up to it or something like that. Um, so it's actually a little bit lower than what it really should be. So a ring, a wax ring like this will give you that little bit of extra thickness and protection to uh, make sure you get a proper seal there. This ring sits down on the flange with this plastic insert down. If you don't have the plastic insert, uh, most of the rings really don't have any kind of bevel or anything. It's just a matter of setting on there. It might even say on the box. This one doesn't, but uh, if, you have, if you've got this plastic flange, rubber flange, just set it on there, down in there. Most toilets that I've ever seen, any instructions they show, uh, show actually putting this on the toilet and then flipping the toilet over and setting it on the, uh, on the toilet flange. I've never been successful at that. So they, this is where this, flan, this wax ring sits, is it sits around here on this, on this big nipple here that's sticking out of the bottom of the toilet. So most manufacturers recommend sticking this on here and then grabbing your toilet, flipping it over. I don't know how they get it to stick there because uh, a couple times I've tried it, the darn thing just falls off on the floor and you, you usually have a mess. So, so I've had good luck with just setting it right in place, right on the, the toilet flange itself on the floor getting my bolts in place and then just picking the toilet up and simply setting it into it. And I'll obviously show you how to do that when the time comes. So uh, that's some of the parts. Um, now you also have a, I'm gonna turn this back over. See, so actually you can see here, this is where the, the bolts that I was talking about, they would uh, be in the floor and they'd go through these slotted holes and get covered up and, and tightened down right there. So. Just going to turn this over. Okay, I'm going to open up the tank and just show you some of the pieces for it. Okay, so um, the tank obviously sits on the back. Before it goes on though, you'll have a, a kind of a, it's usually foam rubber type gasket that sits on, fits over top of this big nut here where the main drain is. And you need to make sure, if, if you just set it on, it, it really seems like, oh, that's not going to fit. But uh, if you just give it a little bit of a stretch, and push it down on there, it should sit right down against the bottom of the tank here and it kind of fits around the pipe that's coming through the bottom. So it, it needs to sit right down solid like that. Most of the better toilets do have a, a foam kind of flan or a gasket for this. Some of them are a little more rigid rubber and uh, I find they don't work nearly as well but uh, this one has a good good foam gasket. Now these two bolts you see sticking out of here, uh, a lot of times they don't come pre-inserted into the bowl like that. They'll be loose in the package with some washers and nuts. Uh, so um, just kind of watch for those. Don't throw them out with the garbage because you're going to need them. And those bolts are what hold the tank onto the bowl. So they would go down through this hole. This gasket would seat itself right into here. So when you pull the lever, the water from the tank, actually enters the toilet through here. Uh, and this one, it flows kind of forward. 
you can probably see the shape right here. So it would flow down through here and up into the bowl and it and it uh, enters the bowl from that area. But uh, so that's what gives you your your uh, water from the tank to the bowl. Inside the inside the tank itself, you're going to have the f the fill uh, float valve. So that's this one. There's a few different styles. Uh, you're going to have a flapper, which in this one is the purple thing or red thing down at the bottom that's hooked to the chain and the, the arm here. So when you flush the toilet, that's what opens up and lets the water out. Let it go. It seals back down around the hole and doesn't allow any water to go down. And the float is obviously a float. It just is adjustable and uh, once the water level comes up, it shuts off eventually. Usually, a lot of these parts are all kind of pre-assembled and, and sitting there. They might need some minor adjustment, but they're usually all assembled and, and ready to go. You should also find uh, some kind of marking or writing that tells you where to set your water level to. So if you need to adjust the float, it lets you know, um, you know how, far, how high the water should come in there. This one here says set uh, WL, so that'd be water level 3 8 below the the uh, overflow top. So this is the overflow here, this tube that's kind of usually in the middle of the tank. So it's saying just set the water level to about 3 8 below the top of that. This tube is just made so that if something screws up, the water can only get so high before it drains over here and actually runs into the toilet. So it would just continually run water until you uh, hurt it or, or adjusted it or whatever. So we want to just set it 3 8 below there in this particular one. Some of them will just have a line marked on the side. They might have a mark on that overflow tube, one or the other. So just depending on your toilet, um, just look at that and see what, what you need. So we've, uh, I think we basically covered all the main pieces other than the seat. In that box that this was in was the lid as well. We don't obviously need that for a few minutes, so we're going to leave it packaged up to the side. I already put the, uh, the gasket on the bottom, and this one, like I said, has the screws already in there. If I can get something to kind of point with. So here's the top of the screws. There's one there. And there's another one over on that side. Uh, and they'll, well they do, they pretty well always have a rubber, some kind of rubber gasket that goes on. Then the bolts go through and uh, sometimes there's washers that fit on the bottom and nuts, but this one doesn't have that. Uh, these here must be what that all is about. So I'm going to set this on here. Like I said, we've got the gasket on there already. You can kind of feel when the bolts line up. I'm just going to push them fully right down through. And uh, looks like that's going to sit there. I'm just going to double check the uh, the instructions here. I'm assuming this is all part of the, uh, the process there. I just want to quickly double check what they're recommending. Pull that through. Okay, so there is a little nylon kind of washer in this package with this particular toilet. And I guess they're calling this um, toolless because they've, on the end of each one of these bolts, they've kind of allowed a handle so you can get under there and grab a hold of it. And it looks like the uh, bolt itself just pulls out once you have it tight. So, But they do have this little washer. Now the washer looks like it's made so you could push it right onto the threads of the nuts. And it'll kind of stay up there, yeah. So I'm just going to insert those on there right now. Just be careful putting your arm in here that you don't bend anything or break anything inside the tank. Push that right up there. So it kind of holds it. Now I'm going to get the, uh, the nuts started. So they just thread on from the bottom. Just have a look in the tank, make sure the bolt isn't turning. You may need a screwdriver or something in there to, to hold it. And then get these both started on there. And then I'm going to uh, just get the tank squared up to the bowl. You could, uh, if you wanted, you could put the bowl right in place first, get it all bolted down and then put the tank on. I just find it easier to put the tank on ahead of time 
when you have a little more room to see what you're doing and get working around it. So I usually just, once I have it kind of semi-tight, I just kind of straddle the bowl, get an idea for if the uh, bowl seems square, or sorry, the tank seems square to the bowl. I think we're pretty good right there. So I can finish tightening up these nuts. You don't want to over tighten them, but you do want to bring the, the uh, tank down, you know, tight to the, uh, to the toilet base. Actually, these little handle things work pretty good. Oops, that one came off. They work pretty good. Usually you could just uh, get underneath here with a crescent wrench or whatever, but this, these little deals that they sent along actually work pretty nice. We got that one kind of snugged up. I'll just I'm trying not to tighten one completely up. I'll go back and forth a little bit. Just kind of get them even. Okay, so we should be pretty good there. Feels pretty nice and firm. Looks straight again. We can readjust that if we have to, but it's, it looks all right. Okay, so we got that on there. Also at this point, I like to uh, install my water supply valve. Uh, sorry not the valve it's actually the hose so uh, you might be more familiar with just a plastic kind of thin hose that's pretty rigid coming down off your toilet uh, these are a braided rubber line so they're rubber hose inside with a braided protective uh, uh, sheathing over top of them they look better and uh, as you can see you can kind of manipulate it however you need it to to be and there's I don't know I think there's about uh, at least four different lengths uh, of this hose depending on the situation you have. The one we have here probably doesn't need to be quite that long. Uh, it probably could be the next size down, but uh, this one will work. So you may have noticed when I had the tank off, there's a threaded fitting down here. I don't need Teflon tape or anything. We're uh, Teflon fitting to Teflon fitting and there's a rubber, uh, I can't, push that down but there's a rubber uh, gasket inside there so sometimes on the cheaper lines that rubber gasket might be loose in the bag or whatever so just make sure you have it in there this one's all kind of part of the fitting and basically you don't want to put a wrench on this or anything you want to snug it up and then just give it a quarter turn like that and that should be all you need if it's leaking after you can just tighten it a little bit with a pair of pliers or something but uh, you don't want to get it too tight it's it's all the only nylon uh, so we've got that on there and like I said this one's probably a little long but the, the nice thing with these is you can put a nice little curve in them or whatever you need to do uh, it's very rare that you'll ever get it to be just completely straight I mean you need a little bit of a play here so usually what I do whoops when I go to hook it on the valve I just give it a nice little bit of a twist however it kind of naturally wants to be and attach it you know you can tuck it back there whatever however you want it to look and that end will just thread onto your valve okay so we got that we tightened those um, now we're ready to uh, get our wax seal get this out of the way enough that you can see get our wax seal and everything sitting here um, and then we can uh, get the toilet sitting on there. So I just took the nuts off of that, these, ring, these uh, bolts. I'm going to take our towel out of there that we had. I'm going to set this in here. Oops, those out of there. Okay, so our wrap wax ring now. I'm just going to unwrap it. Get our paper out of the way. Just set it on there nice so it's just kind of centered up right on there. Place your bolts so they're about in the center of the flange and they're you know straight across from each other. You, your flange might be in a different location. That's something else to uh, consider when going out to get a toilet is measuring how far your flange is to center off the wall. Uh, most are 10 and 12 inches. 
So that'll depend which, or that'll dictate which toilet you need, is to know which way your flange is. If you're in, uh, for instance, Australia, uh, I believe a lot of their toilets actually are mounted on the wall, so the flange is actually back here. So obviously, in the country down under, you're going to need a little different setup if that's where you're watching from. But uh, for North America, I, I believe anyways, 10 and 12 inches is, or sorry, actually I think 8, 10 and 12 inches are your kind of your regular ones and 10 and 12 are the ones you'll see most common. Okay, so I've got that on there. I'm going to move this lid somewhere so I don't break it. And uh, I'm going to uh, set the toilet on there. Get it out, uh, kind of out of the way. I'm just uh, questioning this a little bit because those bolts are a little different than I've ever seen. So again, I'm going to just reference this quickly. Um, I'm just wondering what the uh, the nuts they have kind of have a washer hooked right on, which I don't usually see. So I'm just going to have a real quick look here. It looks like actually they want that washer on there. So again, these are a little different volt. I've never seen this particular thing. I'm going to move this wax ring. So they're just using this to actually hold. You can see there's some there's some play there. So they're saying to thread this down. I think this is the right direction. Uh, where did I see that? Yeah. So they're saying thread this on there to basically hold your bolt steady, which isn't a bad idea. A lot of times the bolt just kind of wobbles around there until you get it tightened up with the normal nut. But I see where they're going with this, so might as well take advantage of it. So I'm just threading that on, and then I, once I slide it into place, I can tighten it up a little bit more. Okay, so you can see how that makes those a lot more rigid. That's, that's a good idea. I haven't seen that before. Got our wax ring back in there centered up as best we can. Um, so I'm going to place the toilet on there and I'm, I'm going to have to put a fair bit of weight on and kind of rock back and forth just to get the toilet to squeeze down into that wax ring and uh, actually make some contact with the floor. So, so that's what I'll do here next. So again I just uh, basically straddle the toilet, grab on back here. It just makes it easier to get a hold of. So as I lower it down, I can kind of see my bolts hitting those holes there. I'll just basically put some weight on the toilet, keep rocking back and forth until it sits down nicely, make some contact with the floor. Now I can uh, just getting the toilet lined up with the floor. My uh, This flange in this room, you're probably seeing this, this space back here. This flange is actually probably uh, close to an inch and a half too far from the wall originally when it was put in. And uh, so we're a little further from the wall than it really needs to be, but it's not really going to affect anything. It just looks a little different than what, what you're used to. So again, I'm just lining things up, just looking how it meets against the wall. When you're closer to the wall like it should be, it's easier to kind of tell that. You could measure it if you wanted, but I'm just kind of going by eye. It just looks symmetrical to the tub and everything, so I'm pretty happy with how that's sitting. So in this this toilet, they've. Uh, oh, I see why they didn't bother sending solid brass bolts. A lot of times when you uh, go to put this cap on, this cap will come with a, a plastic washer. The washers are, it's indicated right on them which side to put them up. So you have a plastic washer, usually a brass washer and a nut. And you'd put that all on the, uh, on this bolt. So you'd have the plastic one first, the metal washer, then the nut. And then the cap would snap on over that. Now these guys actually are smarter than most toilet places it looks like. Their cap is quite a bit higher which it looks like it's kind of made so that you don't have to cut that bolt off. Remember how I was saying I like the brass, solid brass bolts because they cut easier, a little softer. Uh, in this case, you don't even have to cut it off. So, But in uh, a lot of the toilets I do, 
you would have to cut that, put all your nut and washers and everything on, and then I take a hacksaw once I've got that all tightened down, and I will place the hacksaw just above the nut and cut that length of the bolt off that's over the top. Otherwise, the normal caps don't fit. They're only they're actually only about three quarters of this high. So, so these guys have kind of uh, invented invented a better mouse trap. It looks like um, these guys also have just a Just a uh, nylon nut there, basically, it looks like. And it looks like the cap is made to uh, just snap right over that nylon nut. So, Again, like I said, this is the first time I've used this particular brand, and I'm kind of liking it. Got some good features, so. Uh, these guys also have, uh, or claim to have a superior finish on the inside of their bowls, which is actually important. A lot of the cheaper toilets don't. And what happens in a very short time is you uh, you get rings in the toilet and they tend to be a lot harder to keep clean. Um, and I, I'm thinking that the problem is that their finish isn't as smooth. Maybe it's got more pits and stuff in it that you f physically can't see, but uh, uh, they're there because the finish isn't as good. But this one uh, says right on the box that it's got a, a good quality finish. So I think they call it what do they advertise it as? Ever clean surface. So we'll see over time, I guess. So tighten these bolts down. With these, you can kind of get a hold of it pretty good with your fingers. Get it snug so the toilet can't rock and you're straight. And this cap just simply snaps right over there to hide that bolt and stuff that's sticking up. Okay, so we've got that part done. Now we're going to come around the back here and uh, decide how we're going to uh, put this on. I think I'll tuck it back here like this. And again, this has a, a rubber washer in the end. So I'm just going to get it started. And then I'll use a small crescent wrench. Just tight, snug that down good. Just make sure that one feels good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, it's important when you put this in, just make sure you don't get an actual kink in it. Sometimes when you're tightening it, this hose wants to twist a little bit if you're not hanging on to it, and it'll actually kink and, uh, uh, you know, it'll be really restricted and possibly even spring a leak over time. So just make sure it just has some nice uh, gentle curves to it. You shouldn't have any issues. Okay, so at this point, we can uh, slowly open the valve and just watch for, uh, you should, start getting water coming in up there. I'm just opening it a little bit first, looking around here, make sure I've got no leaks right at the actual fittings. It started to fill the bowl, um, or started to fill the tank, and also you'll notice some water right away going into the bowl. I'm pretty happy. I've got a little bit of a drip from the actual valve itself, so we may have to change the valve after. These valves have a tendency to leak around the stem here. The newer ball valves are a lot better. So I'm just going to put that rag there to catch that little bit while we're testing the toilet. And uh, should be good. I've got no actual leaks at my fittings. And I'm just looking around here, making sure I've got no water coming out. The bowl's just, or the tank's just about full. So we'll just wait for it to fill up. And uh, what I like to do once it's filled up kind of check the level, see where it's at, and uh, compare that to where they recommend it to be. Do any adjustments. It's already overfilling too much. It just stopped at the very top of that overfill valve. So I can uh, just read on here, see which way to turn this adjustment in the tank. Let's turn it a little bit to start with. And I'm going to flush the toilet. Once I flush the toilet itself, again, we're just looking for any leaks here, making sure that it seems like it, you know, flushes properly, sounds right, the flapper closes. So we'll do a flush. And uh, I think this is a, this is a 6 liter, 1.6 gallon uh, toilet. So it's not the top of the line most efficient one, but it's still a far cry from the old uh, 13 liter ones. So. So it's refilling. I'm looking, we've got no water running out around here anywhere. Nothing came out around on the floor. 
I'm just letting it refill now again to see where our water level comes up to. It's not taking very long to fill, so that's good. And you can see, I don't know if you can see the water coming through this hose and into that overfill. Okay, so it's still, it stopped before the top, but it's still only about, uh, well, maybe an eighth of an inch down. So this is the, on this particular toilet, this is the float adjustment. So I'm going to give it another couple turns. We'll flush it again. And uh, we'll just see where it, where it fills up to now. Remember, we're looking for about three-eighths of an inch of a drop there. So we're almost there. I'm going to open the, toilet, the seat up while we're waiting for that to fill. Whoops. So this one's got the soft closed seat, which is a nice feature. The seat isn't slamming down every time you close it, if you close it. Oop. Got everything uh, wrapped up here pretty good. Uh, if your seat doesn't come with your toilet, and some of them it doesn't, uh, just oops, shoot. Uh, just make sure you're getting the right shaped seat for the toilet the, for the bowl you have. This is a rounded front. Some of them are elongated, so just make sure your seat matches the the uh, shape of your your bowl. Uh, we're good back there now, so our water level's fine. So, again, the seats can be a little different just depending on which one you have. Usually they have, back here where the bolts go, a couple little caps that flip up. Uh, we've got some items in here. We've got our different washers and bolts and different things in here. Okay, so every seat's a little bit different. This one, again, uh, they're saying toolless, and I'm starting to believe them because they've even kind of got a grippy nut on here on the bottom that you can get a hold of. Shouldn't need a wrench on it. Uh, the only thing I could see is you might need a screwdriver to hold that part steady once you get it tightened up. But I'll take these nuts off quickly here. Uh, there's usually a couple little rubber washers here that help grip the surface of the toilet and they'll fit in fit in under there just so that when the seat is snug it can't slide around on the, the porcelain finish. So that'll go on there. Like that. Just hold those in so they don't fall out. And you may have to, like I said, this one's kind of spring-loaded uh, closing tank. So uh, we've got a couple different washers here to help reinforce where that bolt goes through. Actually we need the offset. They've got one where the the holes in the middle and they've got one where the hole is offset. And to fit this toilet we need to be just off slightly offset so I'll just change those washers out to those style. Get things lined up. Drop our nut in. The threaded end goes in and down, hangs down there. We'll put this nut, looks like the camera's trying to move in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a just a bolt and a nut, so they're just nylon, that's all. So again, I'm not gonna snug either one of them up until I got them both started. And I can just still position, move the uh, seat around a little bit to get it to fit in the optimum spot. Now I can tighten it up. Actually, those grippy nuts work pretty good. Uh, the top does want to spin a little bit, though. I don't have a screwdriver here because they said I didn't need any tools, but I'll put that bar in there, and that'll hold the nut, or the bolt. I mean. OK, so we got that. Snap those caps back down. Like I said, this is the soft closed lid, so it uh, just drops down easily and doesn't uh, slap down every time. I guess we just have the lid on the tank to put back on. So we'll open this up. Okay, decide which way it's 
me to go on there. Set the lid on. And uh, we've got one, one running toilet. Like I said, I have a little bit of a drip here from the actual valve, so I'll change that out here uh, once we get uh, done the wrap up here. And then we should be good. So I don't think there's anything else I can really tell you. That's, uh, that's how I install a toilet. And as you've seen, I, I've never done this particular one. So uh, I even referenced to the, to the manual there a couple times, which can't hurt, and made sure that it's done right. So overall, I, as far as this toilet goes, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the way it's set up. Uh, it's basically toolless, like they claim. Just need a couple minor things. Um, and uh, it seems to work, function good. Now, something else that I do, uh, not everybody recommends it, but something that I like to do uh, now that I'm all done and I'm sure I've got no leaks is you, you have this gap down here where it fits the floor. Now this one fits nice, like it's sitting down on the floor, but you still end up with a little bit of a groove there. Over time, this groove just ends up getting kind of scungy and dirty and gross. So what I usually will do is I'll actually take some clear silicone and I'll come most of the way around the back here. Just put a nice little bead all the way around but I'll leave about this much right at the back. And because the silicone's in there, it's easier to clean. You don't get uh, material underneath there trapped in there that's hard, hard to get out. So I like to silicone. Some people say, no, don't do that because if your wax ring starts leaking for some reason, you don't know you have a problem, right? Because that silicone's just sealing it in there and the, and the moisture's going, finding its way down through the floor. Uh, they make a valid point. That's why I'm leaving a little bit of a gap at the back. So there's a chance for that moisture to come out and for you to see it. Um, and, uh, and then be alerted that there might be a problem. It's, it's not real often that you're going to find that. If your toilet starts getting really rocky in that, then uh, you know it might be a good indication you need to tighten down your bolts down there, the flange bolts. Um, but uh, I like to do the silicone. It just keeps the toilet a little nicer to clean at least where it meets the floor. So so I think that's all the real hints I can give you on what I like to do. So hopefully this will help you on your next toilet install uh, project. We do have a toilet removal video as well. So if you need to start at that process, you can check that video out. Uh, we've got an article online as well dealing with toilets. And uh, that's on our website at house-improvements.com. So you can Check that out there. There's lots of other articles. Uh, there's a link there to our forum, which is getting really busy. Um, we've got lots of lots of uh, members there. I can't even remember how many at this point, but uh, it's just growing all the time. So there's lots of information there as well, but it's also a place that you can come on and, and ask your questions and, and hopefully get an answer for them. So I try to do my best. Uh, I think I've answered everyone that's come on there, um, but uh, we're starting to get a few members that are starting to help out as well. So that's great. So check that out, check out our YouTube channel. Like I mentioned, we've got the toilet removal video and we've got tons of other videos on, on there as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you come back to see the, some more things.